Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Stephen Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. And today we have the latest installment in my syndrome series where we will be discussing Gardner syndrome. But first, we gotta get into that disclaimer and that is that all of the opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone and do not represent any organization that employs me or that I may belong to. And that also this video is for educational purposes only and should be not be taken as medical advice. Should you have any questions about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Gardner syndrome is actually a part of a group of syndromes called familial adenomatous polyposis syndromes, FAP syndromes. These syndromes have a mutation in the APC gene on chromosome 5. APC stands for adenomatous polyposis coli. Gardner syndrome is autosomal dominant and highly penetrant, meaning that if the patient has the affected gene, then they're most likely going to express the syndrome. That being said, about 30% of Gardner syndromes do arise de novo or without any familial history. As you might guess based on the name, these syndromes affect the colon the most. Gardner syndrome is a part of this group of syndromes, but often has a lot of extra colonic features of the syndrome in addition to the colonic features. So first, what are those colonic features? Well, these patients in this family of sy syndromes is marked by colonic polyps. These are adenomatous polyps, which are precancerous in nature. In fact, about half of patients with Gardner syndrome will develop a colon cancer by the time that they're 30. That number is almost 100% by the time they're 40. So early detection is key. Clinically, the colon symptoms begin to appear in the second decade of life, which is very early for detection of colon abnormalities, be them polyps or adenocarcinomas. Because this transformation rate is so high, many of these patients undergo prophylactic colectomy, where the colon is removed, and oftentimes there are already hundreds of polyps present. Gardner syndrome does have that aspect of FAP, but has a lot of extra colonic presentations as well, primarily skeletal abnormalities. Greater than 90% of these patients will have some sort of skeletal abnormality, most often osteomas. And when these osteomas occur, they're most likely to occur in the head and neck. Osteomas are benign bone neoplasms that present as radial opacities or very uh, white spots in a plain film that are nodules of bone when looked at under the microscope. Most patients will have between three to six of these osteomas, but some patients can have a very stark presentation with a ton of these osteomas all over their head and neck and other bones, as you can appreciate in this CT reconstruction of a patient that came through our clinic a while back. The key here is that these osteomas are often observed before the colon symptoms. So if a young patient presents with multiple osteomas, a red flag must go up so that this patient can be worked up for Gardner syndrome. This can be very substantial as these colon polyps can be discovered and diagnosed early. That way, appropriate action can be taken early perhaps before the development of these colon cancers, or at least before severe development, when the cancer can be caught early, perhaps. In addition to the multiple osteomas, another jaw finding is multiple impacted teeth with or without supernumerary teeth. The jaws can look very congested with lots of these extra teeth and the native teeth stuck in the bone. This presentation is very similar to another syndrome, cladocranial dysplasia. However, cladocranial dysplasia and Gardner syndrome really don't have a lot of overlap and there are a lot of differences between the two. So it can be relatively easy to parse out even if the panoramic radiographs look somewhat similar with multiple impacted teeth. Again, an oral healthcare provider 
that is looking at a radiograph of a young patient and detects these findings and is suspicious for Gardner syndrome could potentially save this patient's life or improve their quality of living with an earlier diagnosis. Some other findings of the syndrome are multiple benign tumors of the skin, including uh, lipomas, neurofibromas, lyomyomas, and more profoundly, epidermoid cysts. These can be very plentiful and widespread and can become pretty large. A dense fibrous tumor called a desmoid tumor, or sometimes called a Gardner fibroma, may also be seen. These are commonly seen growing along the scar of the colectomy. So a patient can get this very large fibrous tumor along the colectomy surgery scar. But we can see this in other areas, intra-abdominally, and even sometimes inside the jaw itself. The last finding that I'll discuss is ocular changes. So there's a very specific gene locus in the APC gene that when mutated can lead to ocular pigmentation specifically found in Gardner syndrome. So just to recap, Gardner syndrome is a member of the FAP or familial adenomatous polyposis syndrome family. It can present with multiple osteomas that can be appreciated in the nathic bones as well as impacted supernumerary and native teeth, can present with uh, epidermoid cysts and a number of benign tumors, and is important for early diagnosis as these patients will develop colon cancer at some point in their life. So there you have it, the latest installment in the syndrome series. Just a brief reminder of some of the syndromes out there that you should always keep in the back of your mind because you never know when it's gonna change someone's life. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Share it with someone else that you think might enjoy it or need to know this information as well. If you haven't already, please subscribe and check out my other syndrome series videos as well. Thanks again for watching and be well.